With their highly anticipated showdown on the horizon, Gervonta Davis and Shakur Stevenson had a dramatic encounter at the airport that nobody saw coming. What was supposed to be a tense but civil wait for their fight turned into an explosive confrontation. As if they were already in the ring, the two fighters clashed fiercely, neither willing to back down. In the midst of the chaos, Stevenson suffered a severe head injury, while Davis emerged with only a bruise on his left cheek. Gervonta Tank Davis, the current WBA world title holder, has established himself as one of boxing's most electrifying and dominant forces. With an incredible track record of knocking out all but two of his 20 opponents, Davis has earned his reputation as one of the sport's biggest draws. His power, speed, and relentless aggression in the ring have made him a fan favorite and a nightmare for anyone who steps into the ring with him. Given his formidable resume, it wasn't surprising to many when Davis encountered fellow boxing star Shakur Stevenson at the airport and came out on top in their brief exchange. Gervonta Davis walked away from the altercation with just a bruise on his left cheek. A minor mark, really, considering what happened to Shakur Stevenson. Stevenson wasn't as fortunate. He suffered a head injury that could have serious repercussions. This injury not only puts the potential fight between Davis and Stevenson in jeopardy, but also casts a shadow over Stevenson's future in the sport. And take it from me, head injuries in boxing are always a serious concern. They can quickly escalate from being a temporary setback to something much more severe, potentially ending a career. For Stevenson, it could mean losing his chance to ever step into the ring again. However, Stevenson's team received some reassuring news from the doctors. They confirmed that, despite the initial concerns, the head injury is not as serious as it seemed. As long as Stevenson takes the necessary rest for a couple of weeks, there should be no lasting effects that could jeopardize his upcoming fight. While any head injury can be alarming, this one appears to be more benign than originally feared. The doctors have assured Stevenson's camp that with proper recovery time, he will be back to full health, both physically and mentally. This means that if the highly anticipated fight with Davis goes ahead, Stevenson will be able to face his opponent in top condition. On Davis's side, he's more than ready to take on Stevenson if the fight gets the green light. In fact, this is the matchup he's been eyeing for a long time. Both fighters come into this with undefeated records, but for Davis, that's just another challenge to conquer. He has a proven track record of dismantling those who dare to share the same unbeaten status as he refuses to be seen as just another contender. Now, the intensity surrounding this potential matchup is ramping up, especially after Gervonta Davis's assistant coach, Kenny Ellis, recently took to Instagram to taunt Shakur Stevenson. Ellis specifically called out Stevenson for defending his WBC lightweight title against Joe Cordina on October 12th in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. The timing of this taunt seems deliberate, as Ellis wants to send a clear message to both the promoters and the fans. They're doing this with a purpose. It's almost as if Ellis is challenging Stevenson, reminding him and everyone else that Davis is ready and waiting for the real fight to begin. Kenny Ellis couldn't resist mocking the upcoming Shakur Stevenson versus Joe Cordina fight, sarcastically labeling it as a huge event and urging fans to grab their tickets quickly. His remarks were dripping with irony, clearly meant to downplay the significance of the bout. Stevenson has already been under fire from boxing fans for choosing Cordina as his next opponent, and Ellis's taunts only add fuel to the fire. Many fans believe that Stevenson should have aimed higher, questioning whether Cordina is truly worthy of challenging the WBC lightweight champion. But why is Kenny Ellis mocking this matchup? What does it mean for Shekhar Stevenson? Ellis's sarcasm hints at deeper concerns, suggesting that Stevenson's choice of opponent might not be the best move for his career. Firstly, Cordina is coming off a knockout loss, which raises eyebrows about his readiness to face someone like Stevenson. Not only has he never fought at 135 pounds, but he's also considered a domestic level fighter, which further calls into question the competitiveness of this matchup. What's even more concerning is the lack of interest surrounding Cordina. When his fights are rumored, there's virtually no demand, and the public shows little to no enthusiasm. This lack of buzz is particularly telling in the US, where even hardcore boxing fans are largely unfamiliar with Cordina. His low profile among American fans makes this matchup seem less significant, further undermining the excitement that typically surrounds a fight involving a top-tier boxer like Stevenson. Also, placing the Shakur Stevenson versus Joe Cordina fight as the co-feature on the highly anticipated Artur Beterbiev 
versus Dimitri Bivol event at the Kingdom Arena in Riyadh seems like an odd choice. The excitement surrounding the Better BF Bivol showdown, a clash of titans, is undeniable. But when you add Shakur Cordina to the mix, it feels out of place. In short, it just doesn't fit. So what does this mean for Shekhar Stevenson? It could have several implications, but many experts are in agreement on one key point. Beating Joe Cordina, who is now 32 years old and recently suffered an eighth round knockout loss to Anthony Kakis on May 18th, may not significantly advance Stevenson's career. Cordina's recent defeat means he's not seen as the formidable opponent he once was. His diminished standing in the boxing world could render a victory over him less impactful for Stevenson. If Stevenson defeats Cordina, it might not provide the validation or career boost he needs, especially given Cordina's recent struggles. Many see this matchup as an opportunity for Stevenson to stay active and defend his WBC lightweight title, but it may not offer the same prestige or challenge as other potential opponents. The outcome of this fight might not generate the same level of excitement or interest from fans and critics, which could affect Stevenson's reputation and future opportunities in the sport. No matter how thoroughly Shakur Stevenson dominates Joe Cordina, it won't compare to the level of aggression and tenacity displayed by Anthony Kekas in their fight. Kekase was relentless, throwing non-stop punches and practically beating Cordina into submission. Stevenson, on the other hand, has a different style. He is more likely to box his way to a 12-round decision rather than engaging in an all-out brawl. Now, boxing pros are weighing in on the situation. Ryan Garcia, who has faced Gervonta Davis in the past, voiced his disappointment with Stevenson's choice of opponent. Garcia believes that if Stevenson had faced Davis instead, it would have significantly elevated Davis's status as an undefeated fighter and left fans in awe. I'm disappointed in Stevenson's poor choice of opponent. He should have made a deal with Tank Davis instead. If he had taken that fight, his status in boxing would be absolutely astounding right now. A fight with Tank would have solidified his place at the top, but instead, he's missed a huge opportunity to prove himself against the best. Even Artem Harut Union, who recently fought and lost to Stevenson, expressed his disappointment. He criticized the choice of opponent, suggesting that Cordina is not worthy of the matchup. Harut Union argued that, given Cordina's lack of appeal, the fight is unlikely to deliver an exciting spectacle, regardless of how much it is defended. A fight with someone like Tank Davis would have been a real statement and a chance to elevate his career to the next level. Missing out on that matchup is a lost opportunity for Stevenson to make a significant impact in boxing. Now, given these opinions, what do you think Stevenson should have done? Was it a smart move to take on Cordina, or should he have pursued a fight with Davis instead? Share your thoughts in the comments below.